Hi, in this video we will see how to register images when we have no landmarks. In our previous examples we used interest points or features to find the correspondence between images. This works really well when we take pictures of the same scene because the structure of those interest points is somehow constant. Then we saw the example of the QR code in which we use landmarks. Those can be computed automatically or manually selected. However, sometimes we don't have a reliable way to find those points. So we need a method that can use the information in the image to automatically find the best transformation that achieves the objective. This is a common problem on medical imaging. X-rays, MRI, PET are different image modalities. Each one provides some kind of information and they are complementary. You might be able to see things in one modality that the other does not provide. So doctors usually take different types of images during the diagnostic process to understand what is the problem and maybe to identify where. Then the computational problem is that each image modality is taken in a different machine and the patient can have a different position. So we need to register the images to make them overlap correctly. To make this more clear, let's see some examples. This is a high resolution anatomical image taken in an MRI. You can clearly see all the brain structures. Here we have a functional image. We use this to analyze the brain activity. It looks blurry because we acquire many images in short time to create a video of the brain activity and see how the brain is working. Then we have a PET image. In this case, the image shows the areas in which a tracer is being metabolized. So, as you can see, the images can look really different and they are also in different orientations in the field of view. And because the differences in the detail, it's really hard to find points of interest that can be accurate. So how do we solve this problem? Let's take two images. One is a duplicate of the other. They are just in a different location in the field of view, but the section of the brain is exactly the same. Now we can crop this one to get the area of interest. And we will use a window of the same size to search in the other image for the position that better aligns to the two brains. To visualize what is happening, we can plot the joint histogram. These graphs show on each axis the histogram of each image. In the initial position, we can see that the graph is really dispersed. But as we move the second image close to the target, the histogram starts to form a line. This is because the correlation between the two images is increasing. Then calculating the correlation sounds like a good way to go. But in real life, this is not the case. Remember that our images might have different characteristics. So just by looking at simple correlation won't give you the best result. We need a better way to measure similarity. One way is to calculate the normalized cross correlation. This metric centers the data by removing the mean of each image, and then we multiply the intensities of the first image by the second image after the transformation. And then we normalize the result to be between one and minus one. The goal is to find the transformation that maximizes the NCC. Another metric is the sum of square differences. In this case, we just subtract the second image from the first one, we square the difference, and we sum the result. In this case, we will try to find the transformation that minimizes the SSD. Another common metric is the mutual information. This is computed by adding the entropy of the image 1 plus the entropy of the image 2 after the transformation minus the joint entropy of the two images. 
Here the entropy is calculated with the Shannon entropy formula, and we can try to maximize the MI value. But which metric we should use? Well, that depends on the type of the image. For example, if you have image of different modalities that looks really different, using the correlation might not be the best option. However, we can apply filters that help to make the two images to look a bit more similar before calculating the similarity. In any way, image registration is a problem of optimization because we need to search for the transformation that either minimize or maximize the objective function. Of course, we can constrain the problem. For example, in most of the MRI images, we know where is up and where is the front. So it's not necessarily to apply transformations that will result in the wrong position. To make the problem more interesting, the search is usually performed in three dimensions because we work with a stack of images that creates a volume. If we are registering images from the same subject, we can constrain the search to six degrees of freedom. That is also called a rigid body registration. This is because we know that the head of the patient is the same in both images and there's no significant changes in size of the formations. So, having less degrees of freedom will make this search faster. However, for research, we might want to register individual subjects to a standardized template to perform group analysis. In this case, the transformation matrix will include all the parameters. So we can translate, rotate, scale, and skew the brains in the three dimensions to make them match in the best way to the standard, so we can get more accurate results at the group level. Okay, in this video, we talk about intensity-based registration. We review some metrics to measure similarity using the example of medical images. See you next week.